Welcome to this sample audio clip, which comes from the series entitled Multi Hall Conversations with Jim Brown. In this recording, Jim speaks to self boat builder and trimaran sailor Larry of Hybea. Larry shares how he got into boats and found that he could learn how to build his own multi hall by taking a class taught by Jim and John Marples at the Wooden Boat School in Maine. In the full audio, Larry discusses how he personally built his 40-foot trimaran named Hybea out of wood using the constant camber construction method and speaks with Jim about some of the great sailing experiences he's had and how his life has been influenced by his love of boats, particularly this large cruising trimaran. You can find out more about this historic audio conversation series with Jim Brown at www.outrigmedia.com. Today we're speaking with my old friend Larry of the good trimaran Hybea, and uh, I'm anxious for Larry to tell us how his boat has really shaped his life. Hello, Larry. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Okay. I, I wonder what year it was that, that you and I met up there at the Wooden Boat School. Do you remember? I believe it was uh, 1987. Wow. That was a while back. <laughs> yeah. 1987. Um, I was, uh, I didn't know what to expect, you know, because um, constant camber, what was that? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I wasn't that, well, familiar uh, with it. <laughs> for the for the listeners, uh, um, uh, uh, John Marples and I were teaching a, a class at the Wooden Boat School that summer up there in Maine, and uh, Larry was one of our students. And, uh, gee, more than anyone that I've ever had the privilege of teaching, Larry, I think you have grabbed that technology transfer and really run with it and shaped your life around it. It sure has. It sure has. Uh, it was, uh, to me, you know, boat building was sort of like Chinese almost, learning Chinese. Uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, plank on frame kind of building. And then uh, I know uh, from my experiences on being aboard some sea runners, you know, about the plywood and plywood on frame. However, uh, that seems still a lot more complicated than I was ready to att attempt. So I thought, you know, this uh, idea of constant camber was something that was more manageable. Um, and so I thought, well, let's, let's see what, uh, you know, the course had to offer. Well, this is going back to uh, 1987. Uh, I don't know if you want to go back a little bit further than how I wound up uh, thinking about going to the uh, wooden boat school. Yeah, Larry, that'd be great. Tell us what what in the world uh, <laughs> made, made, made you exercise such a uh, uh, a bent in, in in judgment as to get involved in boats. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, well, I had, uh, when I was uh, in between uh, years in college, I don't know, freshman and sophomore, I I was uh, offered a job to uh, teach uh, small craft uh, at a camp up in, in Maine. So I had to, in order to get qualified, I had to get a Red Cross certification, uh, which would be in sailing, canoeing, and rowboating. So um, I took this course. Uh, up in Sebago Lake, Maine, and that was wonderful because uh, besides learning all the techniques of canoeing, which is kind of interesting, uh, we had a nice small monohull boat, but no motor, so we had to learn how to, you know, really teach it, teach sailing, so got all the basics down, and then uh, we also had to learn how to sail up to a mooring. And 
that was really uh, interesting also because now you had completely you had to rely on the wind, no motors, and so and then the course you have to teach, you really have to bear down it and get it right. So uh, that was my first real learning of sailing, and um, years later uh, I um, moved out to Florida to uh, become a scuba instructor. And uh, from that, I got out onto the water a lot. And um, one day saw a uh, advertisement for a uh, 18-foot pocket cruiser. Uh, it was pretty cheap and uh, needed a little fix-up, but I uh, decided to go for it. And uh, went up and down the Florida Keys with it, and then decided to go over to the Bahamas. Hey. Check- to the Bahamas out, and uh, so that was an uh, interesting also experience because, you know, the navigation was really crude. The only thing we had was on board was a compass. Uh, so I had uh, left from around the Key Biscayne area, and the night before, uh, there was a, a family aboard a, a small trimaran, and I, I think it was a piver, uh, nimble, I believe, and so I went on board, and we were looking at all the charts and trying to figure out uh, courses and currents and wind. And that was kind of a, my first real uh, being aboard a trimaran. And um, then I left and spent some time and made it over the Bahamas. And uh, it was. Kind and what of, was the crossing of the Gulf Stream like for you? Were you by yourself, Larry? Yeah, I was by myself, 18-foot boat. Man. <laughs> and uh, it was a cutter rig. <laughs> so it was a real cool boat. Uh, had a lead keel, um, and uh, I did, you know, manage to. I was a little bit, conf- you know, for about five or six hours going across. I left at midnight, and uh, you know, I didn't know where I was for a lot of the uh, co- time out there because I didn't see anything. But then finally, I did see a, a power boat coming in the, sort of the direction of Bimini. So I thought I was close, and then. Saw Bimini and uh, wound up a little bit uh, north of it because of the uh, still uh, Gulfstream was running pretty good. When I turned the motor on and uh, managed to get into Bimini and then from Bimini all the way down through Nassau and then into the Exumas, and it was uh, uh, it was really uh, a nice experience. I kind of like went aground a few times, uh, but I uh, was able to jump overboard and uh, push off because it was you know that kind of boat and uh, and we had a shallow draft. It was I think it was three and a half feet. So, um, you know, just cruising in that area is uh, very, you know, wonderful, I say. I should say. Yeah, then, boy, uh, what, you, what you've seen, those 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 gin-clear waters on the Bahama banks and reefs, uh, yes. it's, uh, it's hard to beat. Yeah. So, uh, I, anyway, I, the, I got the uh, sailing bug pretty bad there, and... Um, then uh oh I'm going to uh give you the long version here. So, uh <laughs> I sure. eventually uh got the boat up to uh Martha's Vineyard uh a couple of years later. And I uh was living uh, on a small little uh beach house right uh in Vineyard Haven. And on the beach, there was a Newark, a Dick Newark trimaran. I'm not sure which one or which kind, but it was pretty large. And um, so I met the owners. I think there was two young fellas, you know, college age or maybe a little bit older. And um, I helped them uh, step the mast and uh, launch the boat. You know, they had had uh, uh, used uh, anchors to pull the boat off the beach with come-alongs, and then uh, eventually they took everybody, uh, they took a whole bunch of people out sailing with it, and that was, like, really exciting. Uh, so that was another uh, trimaran experience. And yeah. then, so I saw the potential, but it was sort of like still, it was, it was you know, like I said, how, there's no way I could, like, figure out how to make something like this. Well, anyway, uh, many years later, uh, I was in the Bahamas on a different boat, a monohull, and I was by myself again. I, was, I do a lot of single-handed sailing, 
uh, over the years. And uh, I ran into this nice couple on a uh, brown Sea Runner 40 uh, in the Exumas, and uh, we were doing a lot of uh, diving, uh, snorkeling diving, and going from island to island. And eventually we caught up with another Sea Runner and a uh, McAlpin Downey uh, Iroquois. Uh-huh. And all the all these uh, sailors were a little bit, you know, they, you know, they were sort of either, you know, they were attracted to that kind of boat, you know, these the boats that were, you know, popular in the '70s, that people had either built or, you know, they bought boats that people had built, and uh, they were a different crew, you know, they were a different mindset, you know, they weren't like the yachties, yachties. Uh, so uh, <laughs> yeah, they were seasteaders. <laughs> seasteaders, exactly. And uh, there was some. Uh, there was one that one couple that I met. They had a, their daughter on board. She was born on board, and they were re- originally from the Pacific Coast, uh, north, north, I think Oregon. And uh, they had been cruising, uh, came over to the Atlantic through the canal, and uh, they were just like so nice. And everybody was like pretty nice and wild, also at the. At the same time, and I was kind of attracted to that. <laughs> so, so we were. Uh, I even I I was trying to follow everybody in my boat, but everybody was. The story was uh, they would leave like uh, an hour, half, two hours after I had left, and then they'd pass me on the on the leg down to the next island, which would be like twenty five miles or so, and then they by the time I pulled into uh, you know the anchorage. Uh, you know, they already have their, uh, you know, their dinner made or cocktails out or something like that. Yeah. And uh, I said, hmm, <laughs> there's got to be something <laughs> to these multi hulls. You know, they seem to be uh, a little bit quicker, well, actually a lot quicker. And also the other interesting part about it was I was restricted because I had like a five foot eight draft or something. And, uh, of course, I was only, I could only anchor out quarter mile or or more from uh protected uh coves and uh they were like sitting nice and gentle right in the shallows and i would be rocking and rolling uh further out at the anchorage so i said uh, shallow draft hmm that's another uh, factor i like about multi hulls yeah and then uh somebody had a sailing magazine on board um uh, and then there was a advertisement for uh, a class by Jim Brown and John Mopples up in Brooklyn, Maine, teaching uh, a new boat building uh, technique called constant camber. So that's how I found out about it. My gosh, Larry! Yeah, God, it's it's those, those contacts. They 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 seem to just reverberate through our lives. You know, and and uh, for, uh, for for you to do what you've done with your boat and and let people know about it, you know, uh, uh, I I remember that uh, two years after the class in Maine, you showed up with your boat That's right. <laughs> for the for the class that was running that summer. That's correct. Yep. Thanks for listening. Come and join us by signing up for this historic audio conversation series with Jim Brown at www.outrigmedia.com.